The next topic in decision one involves what we call graphs. What we mean by a graph in decision maths is something like this. This is a graph showing exactly what's going on here, where we have two river banks, two islands and bridges connecting them. This graph here explains how to travel between the points and these points here are each of the river banks A and B and the islands C and D. Have a quick look at this and see if you can work out which of these points represents which of these four locations. We'll be looking in more detail at this particular problem later on in the lessons. The objective of this video is to introduce you to and help you to become familiar with and remember some of the key terms involved in graph theory in decision maths. Words like node, arc, order of node, walk, trail, route, path, etc. We'll also introduce the concept of an Eulerian graph and a semi-Eulerian graph and be able to identify these types of graphs. The most important basic terms are the points and the lines joining the points. We call the points either nodes or vertices and we call the lines joining the points arcs or edges. The order of a node is the number of ends of arcs incident upon it. In other words, the number of ends of, ends of arcs that go to that node. So this node here would have order two. This node here will have order three because we have three ends of arcs joining it. A walk is a sequence of arcs such that the end node of one arc is the start node of the next arc. So it's like a little journey through the graph. It doesn't have to cover all of it. It can repeat itself as long as it's continuous, as long as the node that you end up on from the previous arc starts the next arc. That's a walk. A trail, or sometimes referred to as a route, is a sequence of arcs such that the end node of one arc is the start node of the next arc, but no arcs are repeated. So a trail is exactly the same as a walk, but with no repeated arcs. So here we do have an additional stipulation that we can't repeat arcs. A path now is the same as a trail, but now we can only pass through a node once. So now we can't repeat the nodes. A closed trail is a trail where the first node and the last node are the same. So we end back where we started. And again, it doesn't have to cover all of the graph. This, for example, would be a closed trail. A cycle is a closed trail where only the first and last nodes are the same. So the only repeated nodes here are the first and the last ones. Some graphs are connected, some aren't. This is a perfectly legitimate graph. We can have a node without any arcs. We can't have an arc which isn't connected at both ends. So any arc must have a node at both ends of it, but we can have a node with no arcs. I'll explain that in a bit more detail in the lesson. This is a connected graph. 
For a connected graph, we must be able to find a path from any node to any other node. So in other words, we must be able to get there. So we must be able to get from, say, that node to that node, to any of the nodes. Here, clearly, we can't do that because we can't get to this node from anywhere or from this node to any of the others. So that's not a connected graph. An Eulerian graph, and I'll explain a little bit more about where this term comes from. It's actually relevant to that very first graph with the river banks and the islands we looked at. We'll have a, a better look at that in the lesson. An Eulerian graph is a connected graph which has a closed trail containing every arc precisely once. If you can't remember what a closed trail is, go back can see here that we can create a closed trail that contains every arc exactly once. In other words, we can create a trail that goes through the whole graph, but we can do that by only visiting each arc once. In other words, we can draw round the graph without our pen or pencil leaving the paper and without repeating any of the lines. A semi-Eulerian graph is a connected graph which has a trail containing every arc precisely once. Not a closed trail, but we can go through, traverse the whole graph, but we would start and finish at different points. And we'll look at a bit in a bit more detail about properties of the points we need to start and finish on in the lesson. Some graphs, in fact most graphs, are neither Eulerian or semi-Eulerian. Here's a classic example of the type of children's puzzle problem where you have to try and draw around the shape without going over any of the lines more than once. Have a quick go and see if you can do it and then see if you can work out which of the nodes you need to start and finish on.